we want to tell you how to grow grapes. And they're not hard to grow, but if you follow a few things, it'll make all the difference. You'll notice I've given you varieties of grapes in the varieties list, and they're all seedless against except the Concord. And the Concord has seeds. And you can get a seedless variety of Concord, but it doesn't produce nearly as much. And mostly the Concord are great, uh, great for juice and for, for jams and jellies and things. And so you don't care about the seed. And the others are seedless. Now, the basic way of pruning, which is very important, especially for Concord and all of the so-called American grapes, but the European grapes as well, is that when you're setting up your, your vineyard, you want, you'll have posts like this, and they will be depending on uh, your space. If you're a small backyard, you want to put them four feet apart. If you have a more space, you'll put them six feet apart. So let's say four to six feet. And, and then you will put a wire, you'll put two wires on, this, on these posts, on each one, and they'll be about eight inches apart. Now, the first year, you'll plant your grape right here next to the post, and it'll have a little stem up there, it'll have two or three dormant buds, and you'll plant it, and let's say it's got three dormant buds, you take the most vigorous one, and you take it up the post, and you take these green plastic ties, you get in any nursery, and, and tie them to the post, uh, tie the, the stem to the post. If you have branches coming out down here, cut them short, to force this one to become dominant so that you get it to grow up the post. What you would like it to do is grow up to here and, and then you will cut it off. That will force it to branch below where you cut it. And these branches will come down and grow on the ground throughout the summer. This is what you would like to have happen. And then the next year, of course, you cut these off completely. You don't want anything except this becomes the trunk of the, tr of the uh, grapevine. Okay, now how do you deal with trellising them up? Now, uh, after the first year, you'll have a multitude of vines every year. You'll have lots of them. First year, you might only have a couple going each way. But you take the best one, and you take it up, and you go round and round this, uh, oops, uh, round and round, down about halfway, because you've got another vine here, and you'll be coming round and round with it down here. So you come go round and round each direction on the, on the wire. And then when you get it out about halfway, then you cut it off and you tie it right there to the wire with this green plastic stuff. Tie it firmly so it's going to be there. Now, with, uh, you can have cross pieces here so that you don't just have one wire, you have a cross piece that's about this wide, and so you have two wires. You have one here, and then one on the other side of this cross piece. The same thing up here. So you've doubled it. And by doubling it, you can put up two canes, one on the wire uh, back here on the other side, and one here. And so again, you put it round and round and, and tie it uh, to, to the thing, round and round and tie it. Now, with the extra canes that are down here, with each one of them, you cut them off to a, what's called a two-bud spur. And, and so it'll come out just a little ways, wherever there's a leaf, there's always a bud. And so you know that you've had two, le two leaves there, and, but you'll cut it off. Uh, this is going to be in the spring of the year when you do all this. You'll cut it off to a two-bud spur, and you'll leave all these two-bud spurs here. And then you'll have two canes going each way on the two limbs here. And, and so during the summer, these two bud spurs will grow new canes, which will be all over the ground. And this is what you're going to work with next year. But uh, you always leave the two bud spurs, and you always have at least one cane in the air, or two canes. Now, everywhere there was a leaf last year, they will have a new shoot coming up, because there's almost a dormant bud where there's a leaf. And they will grow straight up here, and they'll be fairly close together because you have a lot of leaves on this cane. And so here will be your new shoots, which will grow up. And, and <clears throat> they will come up, and, and because this is eight inches above, uh, because you have lots of wind, 
uh, they will reach up and get a hold of, with a tendril, and they're really stout. You cannot pull it off. You have to cut it off if you want to get it off there once it's attached. And so then these shoots that may be growing two or three inches a day, they grow very fast in the spring, and so they don't break off because they hang on, and they come up here and they come down, and every one of these shoots will be on the ground uh, in a while, and so these will all be shoots down on the ground, which will grow all summer. Now, each one of these shoots, except two or three in here, next to the uh, that first come out, there will be two or three that will not produce any grapes. But all the rest of these, you may have ten of them going up there, each one of them will have two clusters of grapes, a cluster here and, and a cluster here. Now the shape of these clusters will be like this. They'll have two wings and they'll have a tail. And what they do commercially, we'll just talk, talk about commercially. What they do commercially, they come in and they eliminate one cluster, so they've only got one left, and they cut the tail off the other one. And, and then when they get into the spring, they will come in with a girdling tool, and they will clear around the, the trunk down here. And the girdling curl, uh, tool will cut, clear down to the white wood, clear through the flow down into the xylem. And that means that, that it cuts off any flow of food from the leaves down to the roots. And the reason they do that is because they want all the foods to stay up here so that it enlarges the cluster of grapes really, really fast. And the grapes grow great big. And so that's the way they do it. They thin out one cluster, cut, cut the other uh, tail off, and, and leave these. And these grapes will get big because they've girdled it. Now this girdling will only stay for six weeks. And then it grows back over the girdling with, with uh, uh, new cells and a new flow, and in about six weeks it starts transporting more food to the roots, so it doesn't kill the plant. If it was permanently girdled, of course the plant would die, but it doesn't die because it's only a six week girdling. Then they spray the foliage up here, not the foliage, the clusters, with gibberellin, which is a plant hormone, that loosens all the cell walls of all the, the grapes, uh, and so that they grow great big. They just swell up and they grow, oh, four or five times normal size. So you see Thompson Cetus, who are supposed to be this size, and they'll be this big, they'll be elongated, and great big because of the gibberellin and the girdling. And if you put up too much Dutch gibberellin, you knock off all the waves. So you have to be careful. If you don't put on enough, they don't get big enough. And so that's what's done commercially. Now, in the home garden, you're not that concerned. You would like a big crop of grapes, and you'd like to have a big, so you might cut off half the clusters. One, in other words, you have two clusters on each shoot, you might cut off one on each shoot and just leave one. And you might not even want to cut the tail off, you just want to leave it like that. But in California, where most of the grapes grow in the United States, uh, they get a lot of mildew in grapes. They, of course, they dust with sulfur, that's, that's, that's sulfur dust, and then they spray with uh, fungicides. But if they cut off the, the tail, they get less mildew. And these grapes really get big. This whole area gets huge. And so that's just the way they do it. Now, you don't have to cut off that much. You might want to cut off any. Just leave all your grapes. But if you're doing it this way, it, you've, you've reduced the load because you only have uh, you know, two branches going each way, and they're cut off to produce grapes. And, and so that's basically how you do the great pruning. Now remember, you've always got canes growing during the summer down here from the two bud spurs, and next spring you go in, you cut off everything that produced a crop. So I've cut this <coughs> off, I've gotten rid of this, I cut all the, the tendrils off that are holding that there, I just cut off everything, I got rid of it all. And, and then I take the strongest of the canes that were down here, and I put them up and tie them up to here again, and tie them there, and put it up here. I've cut off this, and I start with a new cane, and tie it up here. And then I cut off everything down here uh, that, that is left into two bud spurs. That's the way it's done.